let's now move on to the next question. On 13th of October 1992, in latitude 62 degrees 30 minutes north, Star Vega bore 270, and at the same time, an unknown star bore north with an altitude of 34 degrees. Identify the unknown star. We will follow exactly the same approach in this question, that is, we will make the rational horizon diagram and we will feed or input all the information what is given to us in the question in that diagram and the diagram will give us a lead. So let's uh, put all the information in the rational horizon diagram. We have the rational horizon on the screen now. We can show the NESW points. The center of this diagram represents the zenith of the observer. So you see the Z, the zenith coming up in the center. Irrespective of where the observer is or where the body is, these five points, N, E, S, W on the rational horizon and point Z at the center remain at these locations only. Now in this question, they have given us the latitude. The latitude is 62 degrees 30 minutes north. So it tells us that the zenith will be the north of the equinoctial or the Q point. Or in other words, the Q point would be south of the zenith. And we know that the arc ZQ, Z to Q represents the latitude of the observer. And uh, this in our case is 62 degree 30 minutes. So from the zenith, I go 62 degrees 30 minutes south. And this is where the equinoctial would pass. And I will have the Q point. So you see the equinoctial is passing from Q point, And the equinoctial always passes from the east and west points. So this WQE, which we have on our diagram now, represents the equinoctial for this particular observer. Now, once the equinoctial is there, we can also show the pole. The pole, uh, in this case, the observer is in North Hemisphere. So we will have the North uh, uh, Celestial Pole as our elevated pole or visible pole. And uh, the pole is 90 degree away from the equinoctial or the Q points. So from the Q point, I go 90 degrees away. And uh, this is the point where I have the pole. Let's represent this point as uh, P. We have the pole in the diagram now. Now the next information which the question tells me is that star Vega bore 270. Now in this diagram, the 270 bearing is represented by line ZW. ZW represents 270 bearing. So Vega has to be somewhere on this line. I don't know the altitude of Vega. So I will pick up any random location here and I will put star Vega in this location. So we have the star Vega in our rational horizon diagram now. Now the next information which is given in the question is the unknown star bore north with an altitude of 34 degrees. At the same time, when Vega was sighted, the unknown star was bearing north with the altitude of 34 degrees. Now coming back to our diagram, the ZN line represents the north bearing or 000 bearing. So the unknown star has to be somewhere on this line. Its altitude is given to us as 34 degrees. Now point N is on the horizon. Our star is 34 degrees above the horizon. So from point N going 34 degrees above the horizon, this is where the unknown star is. 
let's mark the unknown star as X. So you can see now that all the information what was given to us in the question has been fed in the rational horizon diagram. Uh, now, Veda, any doubt up to here? Any doubts? No, sir. Okay, all right. Excuse me, sir. Ah, ah, bolo, Veda. Star Vega is only placed on the basis of uh, 270 degrees, right? That's right, Veda. That's right. Okay. Okay, let's proceed ahead then. Now what we uh, do next is I have star Vega in my diagram and uh, I have the pole, I have the zenith. So I'm going to draw the celestial meridian of star Vega. Its celestial meridian will originate from the pole and it will pass from star Vega extending downwards. So let us show the celestial meridian in the diagram. The maroon color line which you see from P going up to Vega and going further is the celestial meridian of Vega. Now concentrate your attention to the arc P to Vega. P to Vega. Now this arc is basically the polar distance of Vega. Polar distance of Vega. And we know that the polar distance is equal to 90 minus declination. You see from Vega to the equinoctial, this is the declination, which I'm uh, showing with the help of the laser pointer now. This is the declination of Vega. And we know equinoctial to pole is 90 degrees. So P to Vega has to be 90 minus declination of Vega, and it is called as polar distance. Now we have the date 13th October 92 and we can get the declination of the Vega from the nautical almanac. So once you do 90 minus that, you get the polar distance. The, this is the value of the polar distance which will be obtained. So we have the uh, Papa Vega side, P Vega side known to us. Now have a, a look at the PZ Vega triangle. Okay, I have named it as Vega. Otherwise, this is the PZX triangle. So in this triangle, I'm uh, showing that triangle with the help of the laser pointer now. Now in that triangle, you see angle Z is a right angle. Because star Vega is at 270 bearing, the pole is north of the observer. So the angle Z is 90 degrees in this particular diagram. And in this triangle, we know the side PZ, Papa Zulu side is known to us. It is the co-lat of the observer or 90 minus latitude of the observer. The latitude is 60 to 30. So 90 minus that is the side Papa Zulu PZ. That's why it is shown with a green tick. Now we also have the Papa Vega side, which is the polar distance of Vega, 51 degrees 13.1, which we calculated found earlier. Now you see in this triangle, Papa Zulu Vega, PZ Vega, it's a spherical triangle. All the three sides are uh, great circles and it has a speciality, angle Z is a right angle. So we can apply the Napier's rule in this triangle and we can find out anything else using these two known values. So I will apply the Napier's rule in this triangle and what I'm going to find out is this angle P. Let me show that with the arrow in the diagram. This angle P is what I'm going to find out. So using Napier's rule, using the two known parts, I'm going to find out this angle P. Now this angle P is basically the LHA of star Vega. It is the LHA of star Vega. 
Now the LHA of star X, if you look carefully, the star X is on my inferior meridian. It is on the other side of the pole. P to N is the inferior meridian of the observer. So anybody on the inferior meridian, its LHA is 180 degrees. So LHA of the unknown star is 180 and the LHA of Vega has been found. This is known to us now. So I can, from this information, find out this angle, which I am highlighting with the laser pointer. And what is this angle? This angle is November Papa Vega. This is the angle which I am talking about. November Papa Vega. And what is this angle here? This angle is LHA of the unknown star minus LHA of Vega. Or you can say it is the difference of R angle between Vega and the unknown star. Angle at the pole contained between celestial meridian of Vega and celestial meridian of the unknown star. So it is the difference of R angle between Vega and this particular star. Now, once I know this angle, I know this is the difference between SHA of the star X and the SHA of star Vega also, because this is the R angle, difference of R angle between the unknown star and Vega. So SHA is also a R angle. So whatever is the SHA of Vega plus this angle is going to give me the SHA of the unknown star. So what I'm going to do now is I will check the SHA of Vega on 13th, 13th October 1992 from the almanac to the SHA of Vega. I will add up this particular angle and I am going to get the SHA of the unknown star. So we will find out the SHA of the unknown star. Now to identify a star along with SHA, we also need its declination. So let's now see how do we find out the declination of the unknown star. Uh, concentrate your attention on November to Papa. November to Papa is the elevation of the pole or altitude of the pole. Now we know that the elevation of the pole or altitude of the pole is equal to the latitude of the observer. And we know the latitude is 62 degree 30 minutes. So November to Papa is equal to 62 degrees 30 minutes. November to X-ray, which is the true altitude of the star is 34 degrees 00, 00 minutes. So I can now easily find out the difference between them it is going to give me Papa X-ray, PX. So in this case, the PX is going to be 28 degrees and 30 minutes. It is NP minus NX. NP equal to the latitude is 6230. NX, the altitude of the star given in the question is 34 degrees, giving us Papa X-ray PX as 28 degrees 30 minutes. Now, if you look carefully, Papa X-ray PX is the polar distance of this particular star. Now, we know polar distance is 90 minus declination. So once we have the polar distance, 90 minus the polar distance is going to give us the declination of the star. So we can obtain the declination of the star since it is uh, the polar distance from the North Pole, the declination will have a northerly name. It is close to the North Pole, so the declination of the star is North. So once we find the SHA and declination, SHA comes out to be 195.33 and declination comes out to be 61 degree 30 minutes. We can go to the star information table on page 268. Look for this SHA 195.33 match the declination and we can identify the star as Dubey. So this is how we solve this question.
she used the same principle, put all the information in the rational horizon diagram, applied the spherical trigonometry, Napier's rule, and we were able to find out the SHA and declination of the star identifying it. So, okay, beta. Abhi batata hu main. Uh, ye jo angle P hai inside the PZ Vega triangle. Angle P, hum log find out kar sakte hai using Napier's rule. Yes, sir. So once you find out this angle, this angle is basically the LHA of Vega. This is the LHA of Vega. Angle at the pole contained between observer's meridian and the meridian of a particular star. Now we know the LHA of the other star, the unknown one, is 180 because it is on our inferior meridian. So LHA of unknown star is 180. LHA of Vega is known to us. From these two, we find out the difference in our angle. Angle November Papa Vega. This, this is what we find out. It will be 180 minus SHA of Vega. Once you get the difference of our angle between these two, now you can easily get the SHA of the star because SHA Vega is available in the almanac. You add this difference to SHA of Vega and you will get the SHA of star X. Okay. Okay. So, or doubts, Patao beta? So, इसको मैंने ऐसे सॉल्व कर लिया था आंसर सेम ही रहा था क्योंकि सेम टाइम पे ऑब्जर्वेशन है सो बोथ स्टार्स हैविंग द सेम एलएचएरीज राइट सो फ्रॉम आई गॉट द एंगल पी व्हिच इक्वल टू एलएचए ऑफ वेगा एसएचए ऑफ वेगा हमें मालूम है वहां से मैंने एलएचएरीज निकाल लिया एंड दो जो स्टार्स सर अननोन है उसका हमें एलएचए ऑफ स्टार मालूम है व्हिच इज 180 डिग्री तो वहां से मैंने एसएचए निकाल लिया सर Perfectly all right, beta. Perfectly all right. Okay, sir. Okay. So clear, beta. All clear up to here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, declination, beta. Yes, sir. Declination, beta. Yes, sir. Please. Okay. बेटा हमने डेक्लिनेशन को कैसे फाइंड आउट किया इस डायग्राम में इफ यू लुक केयरफुली नवंबर टू पापा एन पी इज द एलिवेशन ऑफ द पोल और द एल्टीट्यूड ऑफ द पोल इट इज इक्वल टू द लेटीट्यूड ऑफ द ऑब्जर्वर सो नवंबर टू पापा इज 6230 नवंबर टू एक्स रे इज 34 डिग्रीज दिस इज द एल्टीट्यूड ऑफ द स्टार इट इज गिवन टू अस इन द क्वेश्चन November to X-ray is the altitude of the star. So from these two, November Papa 60 to 30, November X-ray 34, we find out their difference, which is 2830. This difference is PX. Up to here, okay? Up to here, okay, beta? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Now, once you find out Px, Px is the polar distance of the star, and polar distance is equal to 90 minus declination. So we know 90 minus declination, yes, 2830. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. So shall we move on to the next out? Yes, sir. Okay. 